Right. So, I'm editing this and I realise that I made a bit of a mistake. That mistake is the fact that I didn't realise that my audio was cutting in and out, so... Oops. But basically I'm just explaining, hey hey, welcome to Season 2. This is... Um, sway bars. Yeah, it's pretty much it. Um, needs to be light, otherwise you can't see what you're doing. And gonna install some thick boys and that's pretty much it so I'm gonna speed it up along like so and about there that's much better sweet let's get started Feel it coming back. Alright, so here we have the new sway bars. Um, they are much stiffer and much heavier than the old ones, which are going to be replaced. So, hopping under the car. Also, one really good tip about working on cars. Do this when you work under them, because you will get stuff in your eyes and all over your face, because you do not want stuff in your eyeballs. All right, it's a bit tight under here. There's the old sway bar. And I'm gonna get started on unbelting it from the sway bar links and from the mounts. Huh? Yes, I am talking to myself. Yep. This is gonna be so awkward to try and film. Yeah. You know what? You're just gonna have to take my word for it. I'm gonna undo the old sway bars. So, I figured um, before we get into it too much, we should explain what a sway bar actually does. So, a sway bar essentially is a torsion spring, and it does, and people call it like an anti-roll bar and stuff like that, and that's essentially what it does. So, you have your two wheels, um, they're, in this particular case, it's independent suspension, so what that means is your diff is mounted in the middle on a subframe. Anyway, so you have your diff mounted on your subframe, and then you have... Um, axles that go to the wheels. Now they're independent, so that means as one wheel moves, the other one doesn't move. Um, so essentially, it's better for handling than like a live axle, which is essentially a solid axle that goes all the way at the back. So as one wheel moves up, the other one sort of uh, presses down a little bit. I don't know, it's, it's a weird system. But anyway, what a sway bar does, it's called an anti-roll bar because it prevents body roll. And all essentially it is, is a torsion spring. So as you have one wheel move up, it essentially puts pressure on that spring to push the other one the opposite direction so that it flattens out the body. That's essentially what a sway bar does, is when you're cornering and stuff like that, it prevents the body from rolling back and forth like that. So all in all, thicker torsion spring means less body roll. Body roll is bad, and that's what makes these cars feel so boaty, because this one is on stock suspension. Um, I'm not going to go coilovers just yet, just because I like having the, the sleeper look. Um, it is quite high up, yes, but having the sleeper look, it squats nicely. It's very, very comfortable. Very comfortable. And also, it doesn't get a lot of attention because it's not slammed on the ground like my other two Aristos. Good. Now, back to the video. got more solid bushings as well instead of the old crapped out rubber bushings split bushings which are swollen and not great so new bushings new sway bar but no no new sway bar and links but oh well it'll still improve handling by quite a bit all right let's chuck it in overall it's going pretty good all right front sway bar is in and the end links are done up and it's looking really, really good. So, now it's time for the rears. And I think I might have to disconnect the exhaust for that. But if I do that, I'm definitely going to start it up straight through. Well, I don't know. It depends how much I want to piss off the neighbours. But, um, yeah. So, I just have to do the rears. And then I'm all done. So, all well, the rear sway bar. So, there's the rear sway bar there. Here is the factory front sway bar. It's very, very light. I can lift it with one finger. I cannot do that with the aftermarket sway bar. So, 
I'm keen to see how much of a difference this will actually make. Alright, on to the rears. I really should have jacked this up higher. Oh well. Alright, got the end links off and I'm just removing the sway bar and hopefully I can try and shimmy it out of here without having to take the exhaust off because that would make my day. And I know that i got safety glasses on top of my head and they're not doing anything, but they fogged up and this car's clean, so yeah, I'm probably going to regret that. Alright, they're not fogged anymore. Okay, let's keep going. After all that, probably would have been easier to take the exhaust off. Okay, well, the new rear sway bar is in. Uh, I don't know if you can see it from here, but it's in. And the new front sway bar is in. So the rear one is very, very light. The new one is much heavier. Yippee, car is back on the ground and oil change is done and sway bars are done and everything is done. Now it's time to take it for a drive, but I'm gonna plug this mouse repeller back in because it works. There we go. But, battery is also charged. Cool, let's go. I just love that idle sound. Ooh, a bit steamy. All right, let's take this for a drive and see how the sway bars perform. So summing it up, um, wow. Okay, sway bars made a huge difference in the handling. So going, up, going across like corners and stuff like that, it feels so, so much better now. Um, I actually feel a little bit confident not, not really, it's still a boat, but it's actually made such a huge improvement and I'm actually really, really happy with the way that it's um, handling now. Well, for stock suspension anyways, stock suspension besides sway bars, but it's a big improvement and that's good. So um, yeah, that's one of the first major mods, major mods done to the Aristo um, since I've owned it. Um, other stuff, it's just been basic stuff like cleaning and oil changes and everything like that and spark plugs and whatever. Um, so yeah.